Okay, let's go to the next session. Firebird Apache PHP based web application. We will not be able to have a whole training with all the features that you can imagine around web application development. But uh, I will demonstrate you uh, the basic technology based on a customer project that we have created. And hopefully it will work here on my machine since I have access only through a remote database and I have to remove the access from it seems that the internet connection does not work so I have to connect myself to the telecom network currently it seems that nothing works I don't know if, it's, if the door is closed that uh, I have no access or something really strange I will try to go online over another way to avoid this problem. Okay, when we talk about a application, web application development, in general you would uh, typically see tutorials where you see a lot of programming based on a level, hopefully I have not to restart my laptop. Uh, typically, when you see the first tutorials regarding web application development, most of the time you see only tutorials uh, that show you how to uh, create applications, for example, uh, mainly from PHP or from any other development language. And I think I have to restart my machine. So while I'm talking, it's no problem. I have to restart my machine to make this uh, USB stick working. Mainly you see tutorials where you learn about programming in PHP and not everybody is interested in doing all the features in PHP itself because uh, from my perspective a lot of people have much more a background where we need for example the integration together with databases with tables and so on and uh, in that case in such a case a lot of people are already experienced in writing stored procedures and displaying stored procedure as a result set. And uh, it is not a big way to put only some of the small HTML tags around all this uh, and send it by fax to the central of the company, which is a really expensive experience because you need the time of the guy to write it down and the time of the other guy to read it and to enter it into your computer. And this is definitely not a good idea. And uh, we were asked to create a web-based application for them. We had the first reference they had uh, was based on the IB Expert Web Forms technology, but uh, the Web Forms technology is a little bit outdated already. We decided to have a different approach there. And I will show you some parts of this application, how the customer works with it but also some parts of the uh, physical background, how it works internally and how the application is created when I, my uh, laptop works. So hopefully it will work. Even it will be perhaps a little bit slow. It should work now. Better slow connection than no connection. This is the application. I've uh, shown the application on a uh, small review already two days ago and here's a demo part of the application and the entry is simply on our web server which is based on Windows but it can be used also with Linux or any other PHP uh, based application and the idea behind that is here that the people should log in here with their employee number with their personal password and they should do a login and uh, when they're doing the login, the data is created for them and they download the web interface. And uh, I currently have no UMTS connection here. I have only a GPRS connection here. So it's still usable. 
but in general, you would see that a UMTS connection pops up in almost immediately. And I will demonstrate you a little bit how the web application is created, hopefully, uh, when I can get to the database server. Here you see a list of names. This, uh, this guy is responsible for somebody else. Oh, 30 seconds are over now. <laughs> Seems to be a little bit slower than I expected. It's really hard to show this on a, such a slow network. Hopefully it will log in. This is the database server where it is running on. Uh, it is the web server we are using here is running inside a Windows virtual machine, uh, running with VMware. And it runs on a AMD 4 core database server with, I think, uh, 4 gigabytes of RAM. So it's not a high-end uh, computer. It's uh, more or less a general cheap computer. But when we have faster access to this database uh, over the Internet, it will run faster. But um, I want to show you the major part that is written in PHP. Uh, we have a functionality inside that we simply add the PHP connection to the database from a PHP script. And this PHP script simply sends the data that you have entered in your form to the stored procedure. And the stored procedure itself sends you the data back that should be displayed for the next operation. So hopefully the other network will work again. I will try to do so. This looks promising. First, trying to show the example again. So you see already that it's already a little bit faster here. And uh, what you see here is a list of uh, names in this case, for example, that we simply have here the numbers of hours, the type of hours that were payable by the uh, customer. And here is, for example, number of hours and type of hours that are not payable by the customer. For example, holiday when you are ill or something else. And we have a, a, a small user interface that was exactly defined together with the customer. They have some really important features. For example, this line here must be exactly in a specific angle of this point and this type of text must be in a specific uh, graphic uh, way to be displayed and so on. And we have here the possibility, for example, to add new lines. For example, if you are on one day, you have a specific time, for example, you were ill for four hours and after that you had taken uh, four hours of uh, holiday, you need more than one entry. And you can here create as many entries as you need for every day. And we have here the uh, check boxes, uh, the com uh, combo boxes, you would call them from a Delphi perspective. And physically, it's implemented in a way I can hopefully now show a little bit faster. Uh, here is the physical file. And that's almost all. Here is only the part that the definition is uh, regarding the language and information that we are working here with an ESO character set. We can also use with UTF character set. It would be no problem. These are metadata for the page that is created automatically. This is the header information, IB Web Demo Stundenzettel Erfassung. It's the name of the application. Here is the script. And this part of the script is really simple. It simply says, on submit, if anyone presses a submit button on the form, you simply do a action that this page should be called automatically and return to. So simply this file, data PHP, always redirects to the same file again. And here is some more uh, for dialog informations in include script, simply how to display a dialog like a message box. A regular message box in a web application is not a good idea. 
because uh, when you use such a web application and nobody presses on OK, it will stay as long as you uh, have the server running here. It has here some, I hate it. I talk simply, <laughs> try on. It has here some imported CSS files. And when you are working on CSS files, you might see already that the CSS file is just for optical things. The demo database that I will send to you, I hopefully I can show you some parts of the demo database, which is relying on another server already, has a much more easier way. It has no CSS files inside. It has simply only the things that you really need. But the base idea behind that, before I really lose the connection, ah, it seems to be reloaded, the connection. The idea behind this uh, application was really simple. We have one start procedure inside the uh, database. It is called IBA web. And this procedure has a input parameter that gets the data from the current form. And when you have any time already done a operation based on HTML, for example, a email sending form or something like that, you get a specific way how to receive the data from uh, such a dialogue formula. And I would like to show it to you. It's horrible. Ah, here it is. Here starts the PHP implementation, and here is the end of the PHP implementation. The thing that we do is simply we're getting a, a database connection over the PDO protocol. We get a new database connection over the DB PDO protocol which is, for example, directly already added in PHP for Firebird connections. And we have here the database name set to localhost, database connection string, the username, and after that, there should be the password for this connection. I removed it for obvious reasons. I begin a transaction, and I put here together a simple string. This is nothing else than select text from IBE web. And this construction gives all the data, the command data, so what is given to the form, which button was pressed, and so on, directly to this procedure. And uh, here there is a simple thing to take all the data that was entered somewhere in any uh, edit column or edit control, you would call it, in uh, Delphi. It will be imploded for the post variable and for the get variable. And from, from my perspective, when you have learned what this is in PHP, that is all that you need. And when you have seen such a working application, you do not need any more uh, PHP knowledge because all the rest is directly given from the procedure. What we do here is select text from IBE web giving the procedure uh, parameters into the procedure. The last procedure parameters, for example, the remote address. This is the IP address where the uh, connection comes from. And for each line that is coming back from this procedure, it simply prints the information back to the screen. What, is, what it is really does here, it does a commit afterwards, and then it says only, okay, when a transaction, when an exception come up, we will see the message about the problem. And I want to start with IB Expert here. Seems to be that I'm online only over the USB stick, so it should be faster now. Okay, create a new session for me, no problem. When I go into this database, this is a database where we do all the processing in, I show you first the setting of the IBE dollar web procedure. It's really simple. You have here the procedure header, create procedure IBE dollar web. Command is a blob subtype 1. Dot is a blob subtype 1. IP is a varchar 20. Returns any text 
segment size, whatever. We have a lot of variables inside, and then we start with some variable settings. We set some uh, default values. We get some replacements. For example, there is a technology which is really um, dangerous when you're doing web application development with databases over the Internet. It is called SQL injection. It is sometimes really easy to hack some websites to simply add a semicolon and a, a char limiter and after that say drop table customer semicolon or so. It sometimes is already enough to break down this database. What I wanted to show you here on this database, do I have a local copy? I hope so. Since all the parts that are running locally can be shown also here. This one is remote. I wanted to copy it locally. I remember. Okay, here it is again, the IBE web procedure. The idea behind that is that we always say in some areas when we do, for example, a command, <laughs> we give the command to the website. For example, we press on this button here, for example, and this button is, for example, somewhere in the source code. And in the source code, a button always has a, the name CMD. And this CMD button always gives a hint to the uh, procedure what should be done. For example, somewhere at the end should be the login button, uh, logout button here. We have here, for example, a button, uh, input form defined. This is a little bit of HTML knowledge really required. So you will not be able to create web application without any HTML knowledge. But these parts which are programmed here internally are already for a very com complex customer project. Uh, here is a kind of a session ID, which is an internal number, which I can find in a table inside Firebird to recognize the existing user again. So when I am working on a web application, you have the following problem. When you see the application on a specific screen and somebody is pressing a button, you do not have any direct connection to this customer or to this user where you can say like in Delphi, okay, I know already this one is connected with this database connection. You have to identify this database connection, this user connection, this browser connection, in the same way as you can uh, identify him, for example, if you need to uh, get the Firebird ID, FB ID, I call it, I enter this FB ID with a login process in my session table, and every time I get a new form with a valid uh, FB ID, I check out in my table, in my session table, is this FB ID already logged in, that, did he use the correct password, and so on. And uh, I do not have to call him again for the next time for a password. But this, for example, is a way to define a form. Form, input, value, button, logout is the value of a hidden text field. And I use a GIF image as a button replacement. And this is this part here. So when I do the logout, it simply removes, uh, goes back to this data PHP and gives this value back to the web application. And internally, I understand, for example, that what happens for the logout command. I simply look for logout. If anyone is starting this procedure without having already entered anything, uh, I will give back this CMD is empty, so this means select star from IBE web. CMD should be empty. That will be empty. IP can also be empty. So this is a result that I get from the start procedure. Why don't I get anything here? What kind of problem do I have here? Ah, I think 
Well, there seems to be a conversion problem in this part of the database. But you can see already uh, partly how it works here. I simply give back in the text variable some parts of the HTML of the JavaScript part that should be displayed somewhere in the application, in the web browser. And I add, for example, here also the things like hidden columns, I say table uh, operations where all the blue and other stuff uh, will come up. I uh, work with so-called div areas that can be positioned in a, perfectly on a, a specific pixel position and so on. And here comes up a problem for whatever reasons. I do not know exactly at the moment why this comes up because why can't the hint go away? Where's the procedure? Here's the procedure. Okay, what should I do when I do a login? I get the login template from, this, from another procedure. I simply have hard-coded this data inside the procedures. This is not always a good idea, but it's sometimes easier, just for laziness, from my perspective. I think the web connect is again a little bit slow, uh, but hopefully it will restart in a few seconds. <laughs> When I go to this uh, procedure, I have simply added this procedure to have some basic templates. For example, what is the login dialog? The login dialog here in my uh, web page is this one here. And this login dialog has the following source code. And parts of the source code, for example, this part here, is absolutely constant. It will never change. It is simply developed by hand, writing hand-coded HTML parts. So, for example, I need a table with a frame of thickness zero, positioning in the middle or in the center, uh, pixel positions, border must be exactly one pixel, and so on. All these details are not really needed for such a web application. But they are needed for this customer because the, uh, in this web application, we have uh, a lot of discussions with their marketing guys. And they were always telling us about, okay, this line here must be exactly one pixel and below the dark blue line must be also one pixel. And this one must be ending here exactly where this button ends and so on. They had so many stupid wishes where we said, okay, no problem. I will add the position exactly where you want to have it. Therefore, we use the div ID settings, which is a technology inside HTML browsers, where we can exactly position any element somewhere on the form. It is really easy to do so. So it seems that I still cannot access the internet. <laughs> For next conference, we will definitely choose a different way to get into the Internet. Das glaube ich auch mittlerweile. Äh, nö. Okay, back here. Everything that I have started from the, uh, from the uh, database here will be a result into the text variable from this IBE web procedure and the uh, result overall is simply the thing that is written here. And I would have liked to have access to one database, which I have not found uh, before I started this uh, session. But you will definitely get this example for download after the conference. It is a much more simple example. Uh, we simply have one table inside the database. We have a grid view on this table. <laughs> And we can click on any of the rows of this table and we can edit the data and write the data back to the database. And everything is done directly inside the database. It is completely written inside IB Expert. We uh, worked with IB Expert there. But you can use it with any other Firebird related tool also. I will try again. It does not look good. 
I hate it. <laughs> hard to hard to show you what happens inside. I will look for the same database which I have hopefully somewhere on my machine. Okay, I think I can show you some more parts here. should be a little bit easier already but I cannot show you the result here but uh, it is a very old part where only a part of the work was implemented in that time I have some constant colors for example which should be used uh, in separate lines I trim the two variables I get from the web browser I replace here some data in the Uh, things and I do an insert in a log table for for operating. If command is not empty, then get the web template, get a template uh, for the head procedure from this procedure, and this procedure simply says, okay, if the input variable is named head, just enter this into the text result. If the input parameter is a full head put some more details inside for example a logo and some other parts and after that it was entered in the text variable simply suspend it then do some more operations and now we have a look at for Zeilen number project number project bezeichnung from get Zeilen for this specific employee With this numbered hourly uh, report from this month in this year into this variable, we put here some different data inside. So if I start this procedure and I do here only empty results, the procedure itself gives me the header information It gives me here some information about positioned objects. I have to go to the blob viewer. Ah, in that time I think it was not a blob. Yes, I used very long Varchar columns for that. As you can see here within the loop to get the original data. This is a data in this project we get from a Microsoft Navision application. They have the project data stored inside Microsoft Navision and they have a data pump to send the data from Navision to our Firebird database. We display the data that we received from their Navision database with this technology over the internet and after that we simply write back the changes of all the users into the Firebird database. And then their Navision job takes the data back from Firebird to Navision. This is a a really simple idea why we have chosen this way because if uh, anyone would have connected to the database to the original database with uh, with a web application directly into the Navision database you would have uh, been forced to buy named user for Navision for every employee and uh, this means this customer had currently uh, 1500 people working on this database And until the end of the year, 3,500 people must work with this database. And in Europe, over all countries, they have 8,500 employees working on this database. They plan to have it used with over Europe within the next one and a half years, as far as I heard. And uh, you can imagine how many money you have to spend for 8,500 Navision named users. It will be an expensive experience. So the problem is, uh, and how Microsoft does want to sell their licenses is really simple. When your application works directly somewhere in the Navision database, you are forced to have a named user for this employee. But if your application 
your Navision application has to input and export, export some data, import and export some data, you need only one user. So uh, he wanted uh, the guy who's responsible for, Bill, for this project had a conversation with the Navision guys and he wanted to have it proven that this is really true that he does not need to buy licenses when they have this data pump idea between Navision and Firebird. And the Microsoft guy confirmed that this, this is true and he went already and was laughing in that moment since he said, okay, in this case we can directly close the session here because we will not buy any uh, new Navision license because we do not need it. And they tried to convince him to uh, implement all the stuff with Microsoft technologies because it, everything is better and everything is whatever. But the customer was really, it was really important for him to have this application not only, only running on uh, Microsoft devices, but also on all devices. And we test the application always on uh, my, uh, Apple iPhone, iPad, uh, on Safari browser, on Google browser, and on uh, Firefox and Internet Explorer. And there are a lot of things <laughs> that differ a lot between all these platforms, especially regarding the JavaScript functionality. But what you see here is really simple. You get here some input, which uh, input type text is something like an edit control from the Delphi world. They get a name, they get a value, a size, and a max length. And they are read only, depending on a specific situation that you cannot change them in the overview. Here are the lines. Here is a header position, which is taken from a template procedure, positioned uh, information and execute procedure for other templates that I need there. If I am on the other side, on the overview side, I use different HTML contents, constants. And this is a very early stage of the application, which results in much easier visibility here. So here you simply see, I have simply added the constants here inside the start procedure, which is in a lot of reasons not a good idea. Especially not a good idea because you always have the problem that a stored procedure cannot have more than 64K of source code. And uh, you get extremely fast <laughs> in this border. But uh, everything here that is written here constantly inside a stored procedure can be directly transferred to any table. And you can simply do a select on a table to have this data somewhere inside a variable. It's no problem. But uh, for developer ping, it's sometimes easier to have this functionality here. So we have simply some constants inside the database. We have a procedure which gives back a text line, whatever it does, blob or newer versions always use blob, older version uses uh, varchar, and they get the information into this procedure which button was pressed. For example, if I I'm using the uh, save button on the form. I get in this variable the name speichern, which is German language for save. If I press the button logout, I get into this variable automatically the logout button that the user wants to log out. And if I see a specific button here in the command, I can put the things into the text variable and do a suspend whatever I want to do. So in this way, it would be much more interesting, uh, much more easier to understand if I would have already found the demo database that I've created for a workshop that we have done. But for whatever reason, I did not found it on my machine. And it seems to be somewhere on one of the 10 hard disks I have somewhere on my desk. Uh, lying around and I have to look it up but you will definitely get a copy of this demo database with a small instruction how to set up a Firebird enabled PHP server for example when you install IB Expert you already have a Firebird enabled web server we installed
install a uh, Apache server in the IB Expert directory automatically, uh, but you can also download your own Apache server. It's not a big deal to install the additional functionality that is required for PHP access to Firebird, since the only thing that you need is an Apache server. You need PHP, and within the Apache server, in the configuration, simply go here, and here, for example, here is the line, which is created automatically. You have already the same a line and the same config file already on your system. This line here, for example, says, okay, in D projects, whatever, we find Apache PHP 5, PHP 5, Apache 2, DLL. And every PHP 5, PHP or PHP 4 file should be directly be handled by this PHP process. And this goes automatically. And then you need to add some functionality in PHP. And here in PHP, we have, for example, the possibility, the server that we deliver with uh, IB Expert does not use the PDO database access level. It uses the interbase, so-called interbase access level. So this is a simple DLL that should be activated, an extension, should be activated inside your PHP configuration. And when you're doing this, you can do the, the thing that I've showed to you, the uh, dbh equals new PDO, uh, if you have added the PDO extensions, for example. So it's extremely simple to set it up when you know how to do it. Uh, we always want to have a, a short tutorial video which I hope I can produce next week. And this will be uh, available for download. Don't know if I now have access to the internet again. This will be available for download, as a lot of other videos also. Debbie Miles is producing these videos. I, uh, I typically only, we take some videos out of workshop, customer workshops and so on. Okay, I will not show it to you. You can directly find these pages on our website, ibexpert.net slash IBE, on the main page already, if it would come up. You find uh, on the upper right corner, you find some links regarding news, and there is one entry, IB Expert Learning Studio, learning videos. And within these videos, so you have, for example, also the possibility to download some videos about advanced Firebird installations. Advanced Firebird installation simply means uh, what you have to do when you install not only one Firebird server, but for example, the Firebird 2.5 Classic server, the Firebird 2.5 Super Classic, and the Firebird 2.5 Super server on the same machine on different ports. It is explained easily there. Uh, also, to have uh, combined installations with 32-bit environment and 64-bit environment and what you have to do with it. And uh, there should be a video online next week, hopefully next week if I find the time, that displays you the steps from an empty PHP uh, file, what you have to do to, be, uh, to get the, the first data from your Apache installation. And it will be based on an almost empty computer where there's no Apache pre-installed, where there's no PHP pre-installed and where it's only a uh, Firebird server pre-installed and IB Expert is pre-installed. All this technology can be also used without IB Expert, but I recommend to use IB Expert, especially since we need very often in such a project the debugger, for example. And the debugger is a really important thing. For example, we have the possibility inside the debugger to... No don't know why I do not find it. We have the possibility here to uh, connect the, the output variable to uh, a file. And uh, since you, when you, for example, create the HTML website line by line by line, it's sometimes hard to find out when comes the error. And what we can do in the IB Expert version is really simple that we can say, okay, on every suspend on this variable, 
write down everything from this variable into a file. So it's extremely easy to have a step-by-step -step F8, F8, F8 operation and see how the formula in your web browser starts to get more and more and more lines and starts to get working. But I currently do not remember where to set it up. <laughs> there are too many features inside IBX. But create parameters history. No. They are not here. Don't know why. I've used it already, but I forgot how I used it. Okay. Uh, the experience that we have made with this customer installation. On this customer installation, the, uh, where the 1,500 people are working, they only work for one or two days per month on this database application because they only need to enter their data once a month. But uh, when you have the first or the second working day of a month, there's really heavy traffic on this machine, and especially in the morning. The customer is using uh, the web server with, I think, Windows 2008 mm -hmm. server and uh, inside a virtual machine. I think they have configured two CPUs using this virtual machine. So it's not a big server or something like this. It's really not so much performance that we have. But uh, as far as I heard from now, all the users, uh, nobody of the users reported any time a performance problem or something like this. So it can be really easy also uh, made for much larger applications uh, available. Uh, we found that this technology is sometimes a little bit harder to code because you need to code a lot of things. But uh, in most cases, when you know a little bit about the uh, Firebird procedure writing mechanism, it is sometimes much easier to get the information, the additional information that you need to create HTML files and simply put some header, some footer information in front and in the back and you get the data that was written from inside this web application directly into the uh, procedure and you can do whatever you want with this procedure uh, data then. Okay, due to the internet connection, the presentation was not as good as I expected, but uh, you will definitely have access to the video when I have the training video next week. Hopefully next week you can uh, have can download the video and have a look at the source code and use it uh, as a step-by-step -step operation. Questions? Okay. I think we might open the door for a few minutes only, but, and then we can start over with the final session. Thank you.